winner of the Nashville Prize goes to Penelope Seidler. Linda Sharp. Margaret Ollie. To celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Archibald Portrait Prize, <gasps> I've been searching for one painting that will stand the test of time and will say something really important about Australian identity. And you need to find one. Yeah. <laughs> Best of luck. While curator Natalie Wilson from the Art Gallery of New South Wales... Oh, there it is. ...began her treasure hunt for 100 portraits to be hung in the gallery's centenary exhibition. The best picture is what I'm focusing on, how I'm telling the story of the Archibald over the past century. To find my one... Wendy? Hi, come in. I've met sitters. Never been painted before. Maybe if I'm going to say yes, I'll say yes to this. Artists... For Dagi to get Albert at that period of time and for that painting to actually go on and win, that is revolutionary and witnessed a landmark moment in Archibald history. The 2020 Archibald Prize went this year to Vincent Namajira. I feel like crying out of joy. We're ready as a nation to rebuild our country together. Can I hug you? Of course you can. <laughs> this time on Finding the Archibald. I found you. I meet the 2020 winner, it brings a big wind after it when you win an Archibald Prize. <laughs> and Natalie's nationwide search goes into overdrive. We've sent out 15,000 emails. <laughs> oh, my, my God. fingers. As I continue my search for the one portrait. Isn't that great you can walk into an RSL in Australia and talk about art? Yeah. <laughs> that best represents our changing identity as Australians. It's fantastic. And that was before I turned into an outrageous old queen. I meet some of our nation's heroes. To me, he looks like someone who's dealing with what he went through. <gasps> Here it is. And on reflecting how few women have ever won the prize, 10 in 100 years. It's outrageous. I put myself into the frame. You've probably never seen yourself represented like this. In a bid to try and address the glaring imbalance. I want you to win. This is Finding the Archibald. I was so lucky to witness Vincent Namajira making history. His portrait of football legend Adam Goods proves that a portrait can be more than a likeness. It can capture a national reckoning. And so now I'm heading to Aranda country in Central Australia to try to get an insight into Vincent's unique approach to portraiture. I've been such a fan of his work from the very first portraits I saw of his, which were of the rich and powerful. They just made me smile. There's something incredibly irreverent about the way he paints, because it kind of takes the piss out of important people, which I think is an Australian trait. But he's also capable of painting people with a lot of love and a lot of joy. There's two very different sides of Vincent, and that Archibald winning portrait was a very serious picture about a moment in Australian culture. Just really curious as to what kind of guy he is in person. Hey, Vincent, I found you. Hello. Wow, you're painting out here. Normally I paint in the art center, but this is a new change. Is it hard to paint with someone watching? No, I love it. <laughs> oh, you do? I love the attention. <laughs> now, you're pretty famous for your portraits. When you paint somebody, are you thinking about how you feel about them? When I paint a person on the canvas, I like to look on the audience's face mm -hmm. when they see it. I want them to look deep into it. When I paint uh, icons or powerful people, I try to um, strip some of the power away from them and yeah, make them as equal as the rest of the world. Yeah. 
When you look at it, it's, it's happy and it's smiley, and you see it's a little bit funny, but there's a real deep inside of it yeah. when you look harder. I think that's so clever. If you can suck them in with the humour, you keep them there longer. But with Adam, you're doing the opposite. The first time I met Adam was a bit nervous as well because uh, we had the same experiences, especially with uh, discrimination and racist stuff. He's a champion sportsman and an Australian of the year, but game after game, Swans player Adam Goods is the target of prolonged booing. Sydney Swans star player Adam Goods was the victim of a racial slur from a young fan during his side's win over Collingwood last night. It's like the first time on a footy field I've been referred to as a monkey or an ape. It was shattering. It felt like I was in high school again, being bullied, being called all these names because of my appearance. I grew up with that uh, type of stuff when I was going through school. Yeah, it's pretty hard to go through all that and when you get called names and all this. And Adam turned to me and told me, why do you want to paint me for the Archibald? And I said, don't you think it's a bad time that, that an Indigenous person won the Archibald? And it'll make us both proud and everyone as well. What an honour it is to be the first Indigenous winner of the Archibald Prize. It only took 99 years. <laughs> uh, when my name got called out, I was thinking that I was like William Dardy. Back when he won for yeah. the portrait of your great-grandfather. Yes, yes. It brings a big wind after it. When you win an Archibald Prize, just a big whirly wind. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're going to enter again for 2021? Definitely. Keep trying. Never give up. Never give up trying. Good day's work. How are you going to get this home? Just make it on the top, actually. <laughs> You're not putting it up there. Well, I guess that'll be dry by the time you get back home. Tie it down. Tie it down? Yeah, tie ropes. Yeah. Wow. Quite a few thousand dollars on those roof racks. <laughs> well, that was so great, Vincent. Thank you for letting me watch you at work. All right, <laughs> safe driving. Wait. Tie that on or I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> No I've come away from meeting Vincent with a much deeper understanding of what he's trying to do with his work. And in terms of the Archibald Prize, it's so interesting, that idea of a distinguished sitter. And by putting himself in these paintings, he's really asserting himself as an indigenous man in this colonialized land and insisting that he has a place there amongst the so-called distinguished. And for him, his power is in his brush. I have no doubt one of Vincent's portraits will be a strong contender as I hunt for my all-time Archibald. But Natalie is looking for 100 for the gallery's retrospective, and she's still got a long way to go. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Nice to see you again. You too, Dal. Slowly but surely, it's coming together, and on the way, you'll be able to see one of the Archibald works that is a hot contender, Kate Bainan's self-portrait. I've been desperate to see this in the flesh. Wow. It's fantastic. It's really charismatic. You like it? I'm going to take a photo of this one. OK. OK, so here's oh, the war room. What a beautiful it's room. It's a good view, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so these are all your themes? They are. So we've got them um, arranged according to the, the general ideas that I've got in my mind at the moment. It is really exciting seeing them all spread out because I get a sense of just all these faces who have contributed to the making of Australia. So the first group of works are actually going to look at the artist's self-portrait. Who is this woman? Yeah, she's fabulous. So it's an artist by the name of Tempe Manning. 
I just love these two gazes of this very austere looking, I'm an artist, look at me. And she's like, well, so am I. She's kind of saying she's one of the boys, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. Many people think that the Archibald is all about the men because they've won, you know, so many more times than women. But women took part in the Archibald from the very beginning. So part of the search is trying to track down those untold stories and those lost works. And there's, of course, always ones where we just have no idea where they are. We'd love to find them. And it's really going to reveal how far we've travelled in it our will. changing face of Australia, really. Yeah, absolutely. So now, the yes. cult of celebrity. Yeah, exactly. So this is where Dame Edna, um, Barry Humphreys, pops in twice, in fact. Now, this portrait of I know. Molly Meldrum, that's a cracker. I know. The problem is, is that we've only got a black and white image of it and we don't know what it looks like in colour. And This is a portrait of one of my idols. I'm a girl of the 80s and, Countdown. of course, Molly Meldrum and Countdown. Um, but, of course, you know, I have to see the work. I can't just rely on a black and white photo to, to make my, 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 my final selection. But, you know, he's, he's hovering there. As, of course, you know, we've got these fabulous works here. And then we move on to this portrait of John Howard, I just think has so much life. It, it makes us laugh because it's not prime ministerial. And no matter what your politics, I think that portrait has a lot of joy. It does, it does. And then I'm ending the exhibition with Natasha Beniak's portrait of Wendy Whiteley. Which is tiny. Which is tiny showing you that size doesn't matter in the Archibald Prize. Can I tell you, size doesn't matter. <laughs> There's so many pictures I've never seen. I'd love to spend some time. Of course. Pick and choose, pull some aside and take some snaps. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> John Howard, I love this painting. I'm really glad Natalie's done such a lot of work. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit. Cheer up. I love this portrait of my friend Deb. I want to see it in the flesh. So as I look in these faces, I'm looking for that painting that's going to last 100 years, that at the 200-year anniversary, the painting that I choose will still have meaning. I've got Molly's number. I'm really keen to see this picture because knowing Molly's love for all things Egyptian, I'm pretty sure it's going to be wild. Oh. Hey, Molly, it's Rachel. Are you sure? <laughs> Listen, the reason I'm calling is I'm hoping you might be able to help me out with something. Yeah, what? Well, I've come across a small black and white image of a fantastic portrait of you done in the 80s. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly where it is. It's hanging in uh, my front room. <gasps> you have it? Yeah, I have. Fantastic. Can I come and see it? Oh, we'd love to see you. All right, look forward to it. Put the champagne on ice. Oh, well, well. <laughs> Bye. <gasps> Natalie's going to be so excited. I really do hope my detective skills help Natalie with her search. Monty! Monty! But she's really got me thinking about how the Archibald Prize has been so dominated by men. Shockingly, in 99 years of the prize, only 10 female artists have won the Archibald. The trailblazer was Nora Heisen in 1938, but her win was met by a sexist furor from artists and critics alike. So, in the spirit of helping to address this gender imbalance, I've decided to face my fears and finally sit for an Archibald portrait. Natasha's work has an intense intimacy that I admire. And in 2016, she almost won the Archie with her miniature of Wendy Whiteley. The wonderful Natasha Bianyak. I've been thinking about asking Natasha to paint me. She did a beautiful job, I have to say. Yeah, it'd be interesting actually for her to do you. And she's agreed to meet me. Who's that? 
Natasha, hi. hi. Thanks, Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. I see so much art on the wall. Uh, yeah, art everywhere. <laughs> it's like we go to bed and the paintings have babies every night. You wake up and there's more of them. That's my husband's studio, actually. Ah, wow. I know this artists is great. always like to check out other oh, artists' nice. spaces. It looks like there's a lot going on in there. Thank you. Ah. Thank you. Lovely. So, um, <laughs> it's kind of never done this before. <laughs> I did bring in some of my work to show you. So this is my 2016 portrait of Wendy Whiteley. I didn't know it was this small. Yeah, this is actually one of my larger uh, sizes that that I produce. You know, because the work is so small, you do have to get up close to it and it's creating this sort of unavoidable intimacy. Unavoidable intimacy, <laughs> yeah. what a beautiful thing to say. <laughs> that portrait of you pregnant was so deep. We go through Insta feeds and everyone's got the bump shot. It's all yeah. about the bump and how mummy rocking it I am, yeah. you know? And that portrait that had a lot of vulnerability and doubt. It's a, definitely more of a personal painting, that one, for me. <laughs> I love these paintings of yours. I've been calling them your blankie pictures. <laughs> Although the paintings often appear quite beautiful, there is that underlying restlessness or uneasiness. Well, these really resonated with me. I had, a couple of years ago, a really tough time. Just worried myself to a state of deep um, inability to function, where I lay on the couch with, <laughs> with a blanket yeah. for four months and didn't know how I would ever get up again. And it was so animal, the desire to not be seen, the desire to hide. You know, I'm really glad that they have resonated with you. So I think we just need to be as natural as possible to make a really compelling work. That sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this way. So, so this is where I... I had my little blanky moment. Yeah. <laughs> and usually if I'm sad, the boys come and see me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, maybe <gasps> I should take some images. Oh, I'm getting this, <laughs> I'm getting this sad look. So good. I like to think that the work is, it's small in scale, but it packs like an emotional punch. I reckon Natasha will challenge the idea of what a celebrity portrait can look like. And being a six-time finalist, I'm hoping 2021 is her year. Well, it was so nice to meet you, and I can't believe the next time I meet yeah. you, you'll have a little baby. I know. A little baby. <laughs> it's shocking that after Nora Heisen's 1938 win, it took more than 20 years before Judy Kassab became the second female artist to win. So this is her 1960 winning portrait of Stan Rapitek, the artist. Judy, of course, went on to win a second time in 1967, but I find this one such an uh, in incredible portrayal of a fellow emigre artist. I feel it's shaking up this idea of what is Australian and who is a, an important Australian to include the Second World War waves of immigrants. Ms. Cassab, we've been talking about this present boom in art in Australia. And of course, Judy Cassab was really influential on the Sydney art scene at the time. Australia is now internationally known for the painters, which is a wonderful thing. But it wasn't until the end of the millennium that women really started to slash the Archibald's canvas ceiling. The Archibald Prize goes to Del Catherine Barton. Del Catherine Barton. Fiona Larry, Louise Hearman, Yvette Coppersmith. Back in Sydney, I'm visiting the fifth female artist to win. Judges chose as the best work a self-portrait by 36-year-old Sydney artist Wendy Sharp, painting herself as the classical Diana. She's an art goddess, renowned for her flamboyant style. I'm curious to know what she feels about the gender disparity. 
that's been so prevalent in the art world My God. and the Archibald. Wendy? Hi, Rachel. This is amazing. Hello. Yes, welcome. Wow. Do you ever lose your keys? I lose everything <laughs> in here. Look, I mean, but I sort of know where it is. I mean, most of it is in piles, and I sort of know it's in that pile or that pile. I think I recognise this bra. Well, you do. I got that out specially to show you. I was looking for something else and I was rewarded by finding that. It's been immortalised. And it is. This is um, Diana of Erskineville's green bra. And the winner is, for $35,000, Wendy Sharp. Was Diana invented to blow up the Archibald? I was really shocked when I won. I mean, I absolutely did not expect this at all. You really don't know. You don't know. It's a big, bold statement. Diana is a warrior goddess. Now, women did portraits, and often very demure. So a female portraitist would do miniatures mm. and very ladylike mm. work. Of course, Nora Hayson, first woman to win, was also a very demure, feminine portrait. Along comes Wendy Sharp. There is just something so unapologetically female in a messy, sexual, extroverted piece of work. So thank you, thank you. She's completely out there, and I guess, yes, she certainly is not one of those ladies who's an accomplished little watercolourist doing tiny little neat portraits, which, as you say, women were supposed to, and not in a messy, serious, and um, very determined way. Do you paint other people recognisably other people a lot? When I'm painting something like my painting of Magda that's in the Archibald, it needs to look like her. I mean, it doesn't have to be a dead ringer for her, but it does need to look like her. I found that painting so powerful. That is saying something new and really complex about celebrity. She's recognisably a woman who has endured so much by putting herself out in the public debate. Mm. And the national result, yes responses, 7,817,000. This is for all of us, no matter what way we want to live our lives. Her work as a gay marriage activist and then also just her as such a funny and clever person. I am so over this lockdown. Playing netball against yourself is not all it's cracked up to be, especially when you still can't even win. I thought, I know exactly how I'm going to paint you. But Sharon, absolutely haunted, devastated. And then behind her is a backdrop of burning buildings and disaster. Yes, it's also her work for bushfire relief. Just something terrible is happening and she's having to cope. It's great, I love it. So 1996, you're the fifth woman to win the Archibald, 75 years in. What do you make of that? It's outrageous. But then as you think about it, it's kind of outrageous even now that we've only had one female prime minister. So it's in the art world, but it's everywhere. So now, 10 in coming towards 100 years, it's not very much. It's still a little bit of ground to cover. There's a little bit of ground to cover, yes. Wendy's bold and brash Diana of Erskineville takes a completely different approach to another Archie-winning woman's portrait that I've always wanted to see. I love this painting. In 2014, Fiona Lowry became only the eighth female artist to win for her portrait of architect Penelope Seidler. Each year, the Archibald Prize is usually dominated by entries from male artists painting male subjects. This year, women made up half of the finalists with the win an all-female affair. Up the women, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. She's part of our cultural history, and I think she's a really important person and, and, and compelling. I agree, and I'm excited to meet this Australian icon for the first time. Hello, it must be Rachel. Penelope oh, Seidler. Hi. Wow. Wow, what a space. Well, I like it. If you blindfolded me and dropped me in here, I would know I was in a Seidler building. Please. And we even have another Seidler building over there, the much poor, much maligned Blues Point, which I enjoy looking at. An Austrian Jewish refugee, Harry Seidler is credited as the man who brought modernist architecture to the country. 
In 1958, he married Penelope, who also became an architect and his key collaborator. But her role in the Seidler story has not always been acknowledged. From an architectural point of view, it opens it up spatially and you can get all sorts of interesting effects with interpenetration of space. Now I'm looking around, but there's something that I don't see. Oh, anymore. I think you're after a particular painting. I might be. And if you'll follow me upstairs, that's where you might find it. Shall we? Yeah. And you are one of very few subjects who very happily have acquired and live with their portrait. Well, I wasn't going to let anyone else have it, I can assure you. Well, <gasps> here it is. It's enormous. I see a portrait of an incredibly intelligent, vibrant, vital, distinguished... Oh, distinguished. Oh, well, distinguished right. lady yes. of Australian arts, architecture right. and letters. Right. But Fiona has done a, an amazing job. She's just got me in a mood that I sometimes see if I look in the mirror. What is that look? Where are you? Thinking about past days. If the ambition or the aspiration of the Archibald is to create our Australian pantheon of people who have contributed to all aspects of Australian life, then I think the prize did Australia and yourself a service in recording you in this picture. Well, it certainly uh, did something because I noticed people would look at me sometimes and think, where have I seen that face before? And I know it's all due to this. So this is yes. your Mona Lisa. I think, <laughs> I think it put me on the, the cultural map in a, in a place that I hadn't been before because all the attention was always about my husband. But this is a woman you want to meet. That's why I think that paintings had impact I because see. it well, makes us say, who is she? I found that portrait of Penelope so unexpectedly moving. That painting elevated Penelope, where she so rightly belongs. And I loved that she herself was a little chuffed about that. Natalie is still trying to track down missing artworks from across Australia for her exhibition of the top 100 Archibald portraits. Next year, the Archibald Prize turns 100. The Art Gallery of New South Wales has embarked on a nationwide hunt for thousands of missing Archibald portraits. Good afternoon, Natalie Wilson. And it's the women who are proving hardest to find. Now you'd think uh, many of these missing portraits might be in Victoria. Particularly in the 1920s, women artists from Victoria were very well known and entered the prize and we just don't know where they are. There have been a number of really well-known South Australian artists who were Archibald winners. So Nora Hyson, for example. Nora was actually um, in the Archibald 16 times and we're still missing a couple of her works. And there are a lot of Tasmanians that have been included in the prize. Um, a woman by the name of Florence Rodway and other Tasmanian women, Edith Holmes. These are all names that we don't know um, much about today, but we're really keen to find those early portraits. All right, start digging. Good on you, Natalie, thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Bye. Women have been entering the Archibald since the very beginning, but I've been wondering if the lack of female winners had something to do with the absence of women on the judging panel. For the first 70 years, there was only ever one or two female judges. Gradually, their presence increased. Could I just ask if you could put your hand up? And so did the number of female winners. This can't be a coincidence, so I'm heading to Canberra to meet the curator of an exhibition dedicated to a century of Australian female artists. I'm trying to understand why so few Australian women have won the Archibald. Only 10 artists in 100 years, and two of them are here. 
What were the barriers to stop these extraordinary women having the kind of successful careers that the blokes got? <laughs> well, I don't think it's a single or a singular answer, but certainly when Nora did win the Archibald Prize, there was, you know, outcry and there were serious questions asked. People called for an inquiry. Max Meldrum, you know, publicly condemned uh, Nora winning the prize. And I think it really affected Nora as well. Uh, you know, she writes about it in her diaries. So I can see here two artists, Vet Coppersmith, who won the Archibald, and of course Kate Bannon was a finalist. And that's just been in the last decade when there has been more women on the board of trustees. How important is it having a gender balance at those kind of gatekeeper levels of any institution? to value women creatives. Oh yeah, I think it's hugely important. It's important that, you know, everyone has a seat at the table. And I think, you know, particularly in institutional contexts, there's a lot of legacy to deal with. You need to put these gestures um, and actions of equity in place mm. so that you can level the playing field. Our national capital might not be famous for its level playing field when it comes to women, but it's a fantastic place to enjoy portraits, and Archibalds are tucked away all over the city. I've asked my mate, Dr Chris McAuliffe, hashtag bona fide art expert, to join me on my adventures in the nation's capital, starting at the National Portrait Gallery. Isn't it fantastic that here in our nation's capital, we have an institution completely devoted to portraiture? That's right, and before that, there wasn't really a national portrait collection. Since opening in just 2008, the National Portrait Gallery has amassed an incredible collection of Australian faces. This is a pretty intense portrait, isn't it? Including nearly 100 Archibald portraits. But there's one painting that's the crowd favourite. Ah, here she is. Hello, Deb. One of your buddies? She is. And a national treasure. Oh, she's beautiful. I love the physicality. I love the grubby old wool pack that it's painted on. And then I love the way it sort of focuses and becomes fleshy and fulsome and luscious in the middle. Look, if it wasn't under glass, you could probably smell it. You could smell the burlap. Well, this won the People's Choice. Why didn't it win the Archie? What was the gobsnobbery that <laughs> this I don't is know. one of the I, most, I mean... most looked for portraits in, in this, the National Portrait Gallery? The trustees probably feel they got a responsibility to the idea of capital A art and capital I institutions and the burden of history is on them and they maybe make more formal conservative decisions mm. than the punters who are just steaming in the door looking for a buzz. But you know who I really want to talk to is Deb. Great idea. Hey you! <laughs> how are you gorgeous? Good, how are you? Good. Look where I am. Do you recognise that beautiful Deb? I remember Avid getting in contact with my agency at the time. But they had seen me win the AFI Award for Best Actress for Radiance. Christ, Mum's dead. No one turned up to a funeral. And the whole idea of it being Archibald, it was a pretty amazing request that came through. And I said, yep, I have no idea who you are, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> For 10 years, the People's Choice has upstaged the Archibald Prize because just about everybody likes to disagree with the judges. Um, oh, this is fantastic. Oh my God, it was amazing. Like, it, it takes my breath away. And the fact that I was paying for the Archibald, you know, it doesn't get much better than that. It's like the Logie of the art world, getting the People's Choice Award. <laughs> well, it's so nice talking to you, darling. I love you. Thank you, hon. Mwah, mwah. You're beautiful. Bye. Bye. While on an art romp through our capital, I want to visit other heroes of mine who have been immortalised by the Archibald. Next stop is a building not typically considered synonymous with the Archibald Prize, Parliament House. 
So why are we here, Chris? Why are these portraits so important? Well, I think there's a bit of a prehistory of the Archie in this building because in 1911, they formed a committee to commission portraits of historical figures. They wanted representative men. So, <laughs> so well, it looks here they like are and they're representing. But there's one face who had a lasting impact on my life. Here is your come to golf moment. It's time. Education is the key to equality of opportunity. We will abolish fees at universities and colleges of advanced education. Well, I have to say, Whitlam had a huge influence on my life. After my father abandoned my mother and three children, it was Goff's free university that enabled my mother to go back to school, become a teacher and support us. So I've got a little soft spot in my heart because I think our lives could have been very different if he hadn't had done what he, what he did. I'm not a huge Clifton Pugh fan, but I think he's, he was the right man for Gough Whitlam's portrait. For the man of the times. Yeah. Thanks, Gough. There's a less well-known Archibald portrait I'd like Chris to weigh in on. It lives in the War Memorial and is also very special to me. So I'd like to introduce you to the indomitable and extraordinary Nurse Bullwinkle. She's... Have you met her before? No. I stood in front of this portrait when I was 11 years old on my first trip to the nation's capital and it did blow my mind because that little girl didn't know that women could be war heroes. So she was the sole survivor of a Japanese massacre infamous on Banker Island in 1942. When Singapore fell to the Japanese in World War II, Sister Bullwinkle was evacuated, but her ship was bombed and sank. Some survivors made it to Banker Island, where they tried to surrender to Japanese soldiers. We just sort of looked at each other and said, they're not taking prisoners. And we seemed to accept that fact. They were ordered to march into the sea and machine gunned. 21 nurses died, along with 60 soldiers and civilians. Sister Bullwinkle was shot, but survived by pretending to be dead. No one else made it. She then spent the rest of the war as a prisoner of war. What do you see when you look at it? Well, you see, I don't see any of that. Mm. And that's part of the problem, isn't it? I mean, how do you pack that incredible, horrific narrative into the face and the body just sitting there? This is interesting in terms of portraiture because it shows how constraining the conventions can be. And yet it did its job that yeah, when I yeah. stood in front of it as an 11-year-old, it did make me want to know her story. Yeah. I was certainly passionate and outraged. But you know, passionate and outraged, actually, those are words that start to apply to Archibald portraits now, I think. You know, the, the, the Archibald's catching up with you, Rachel. All right, well, I'm gonna salute Nurse Bill Winkle. Before leaving Canberra, there's one final Archie winner I want to show Chris. This 1942 winning portrait was painted by William Dargi in Syria during World War II, 14 years before his Archibald winning portrait of Albert Namajira. The painting was on a ship en route to Australia that was sunk by enemy fire. But just like its subject, the portrait survived to tell its story. Here he is. Corporal Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon, VC. The award he won was in battle in Syria, you know, took on an enemy machine gun nest uh, with a bayonet and saved the day. But, you know, when Dargie was making this portrait, he noticed that uh, Gordon's hands were shaking as he told the story of the battle. And Gordon said, yeah, that, that happens whenever I tell the story. But what's amazing about this portrait to me is it does have that heroic Aussie digger, 
But I do think the artist has captured the cost of war. I mean, he doesn't have that kind of stoic self-possession. To me, he looks like someone who's dealing with what he went through. Maybe I should speak to a few men who have served, perhaps some women too, about what they take from this portrait. You know what? I might pop into a local Ari tonight and have a beer. Ask them what they think. I'm also hoping they'll weigh in on my growing list of favourite Archies. Hello, gentlemen. My name is Rachel. Good How are you doing, Steve? Steve? Oh, good. Richard. Yeah. How do you do? Can I show you a few of my favourite portraits? I'd love to get your opinions. Isn't that great you can walk into an RSL in Australia and talk about art? <laughs> so these are some of my favourite that I've been collecting so far. What do you think of this one? Oh, that's a typical Australian soldier, isn't it? When you look into those eyes, uh, do you think that captures what a soldier goes through? Absolutely, yes, yeah, it yeah. does. Do you know who this is? Uh, she was the only one to survive being machine yeah. gunned by the Japanese. <laughs> so they got the post-traumatic stress in the eyes. So this is Brett's. Yes. Do you think that's a portrait? Yes. Well, yeah, it is. You can see a little face yeah. in there. But it's a story as well. Yep. What do you think of this one for a great Australian? Doesn't do anything to me. <laughs> Sorry. What do you see when you look at this man? Now, he was the first Indigenous man to get Australian citizenship, this artist. I, I think it's not justified. I mean, he was already here. He's an Australian. This is Vincent Namajira. All oh, right. Albert Namajira's great grandson. And he's painted his great grandfather. And then he's painted Chuck Berry on the guitar. Oh, it's happy. It's a happy painting. It's a happy painting, isn't it? Do you know who this is? Oh, is that John Howard? I was going to say, a young John, John Howard. Young and hot Howard. <laughs> you would never know that that was going to be a Prime Minister of Australia. Yes. That's what I love it about looks it. looks really, you know, simple and ordinary. You have to pick one favourite Archie of all time. Oh, I'm going to pick that one. <gasps> he goes the Vincent Namajira. But that's awesome. That's Why? just such a great painting. It's more than a portrait, though, that, isn't it? It's a story. It's a history. Yeah, 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 that's right. If you could live with any one of these portraits, you'd take one home, which would it be? That one. <sighs> She's gone for the money. There is only one painting in here worth more than $5 million. <laughs> well done. <laughs> They say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I'm starting to realise that I'm drawn to portraits that reveal something vulnerable and intimate about the sitter. Today, Natasha Bienik is coming to begin a rather personal journey with some sketch studies. Hey. <laughs> We're hoping to bring the percentage of winning female artists up from 10%. This is baby Florence. To a far more respectable 11 yeah. And there's a new member on the team. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you so much. How's yeah. it been? Come in, come Yeah, in. thanks. So this is Spanish. It's hand knotted and I bought it on my honeymoon. That is amazing. <laughs> and we'll just break up a bit of that grey and then I can have you leaning on top of it. It's great that we're doing this because it really gives me the opportunity to sort of examine your features and your proportions and just really get to know you. This is the easiest position. <laughs> Actually, when you do a Google search of Rachel Griffiths, <laughs> You're um, automatically hit with a lot of really glamorous images. You know, it's a very public Rachel, and I think what I want to achieve, it's very different. And I just want to reflect something quite personal and, and private. And I think the viewer automatically almost becomes an intruder on that moment. I think you understand something really amazing about women, the way you paint women and 
women's interior lives. I guess I just hope the fact that it's got my face doesn't ruin your picture. Oh no, because people aren't used to seeing you like this. It can definitely add value to the painting. I want you to win. Is this the first work you've... No, I was actually back in my studio three weeks after the, the baby was born. You know, a normal day for me is looking after them for at least 14 hours. And then I try and get a couple of hours done in the studio. There is a lot of pressure to, to do it all. And I know that I feel guilty pretty much all of the time. God, it is so hard, isn't it? Yeah, I, I often feel like I did my best work before I had children. It's so hard to give something that's not your children 100%. Yeah. It's so anti our first instincts. So, yeah, do you want to have a Can look? Can I have a yeah, peek? Yeah, definitely. Okay. No, I'd love to. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Wild. It's got a real sense of like realism. You can this see, is a woman yeah. of fifty something. Yeah. My face is falling. <laughs> it's definitely falling to me. Oh, I think it looks. No, it's I, beautiful. I like the pose. Just don't see yourself the age you are. You know what I You've mean? You've probably never seen yourself represented like this. It's just, so a, you, it's just a study of the face. Oh God, I forget. So you're actually going to shrink this down? Yeah, yeah. Your face in the painting won't be anywhere larger than like a 50 cent piece. It will be small. That's perfect. I don't think people need any more of me <laughs> than that. Back in Sydney, I'm catching up with Natalie on her treasure hunt. But until I see the Molly Meldrum painting for myself, I'm not going to let on that I've actually found it for her. I've come to get all the gloss. How did you go with your call out? Look, can you believe that we've received and sent out 15,000 emails? <laughs> oh my God! My Lord. fingers. Yeah, and we're looking, of course, for those more than 6,000 works, and we've done pretty well. Yeah. We reckon we know where about 1,500 of them are. What other portraits are you really hoping will come out of the woodwork that you're looking for? Well, there's Winner. Can you believe it? Um, it was painted in 1958 and it was painted by William Pidgeon. It's a portrait of a guy called Ray Walker, mm -hmm. who was a journalist and the editor of the Daily Telegraph. Now, this particular work used to hang in the Journalist Club in Sydney. And in 1996, it was reported that the work had been stolen. But it turns out a day later, the thief felt a little bit of a twang of guilt. Or sobered up. Or sobered up, perhaps, <laughs> and decided to return it to um, William Pigeon's wife. So it went back to the club, then it went missing again. Um, it went underground and we've not seen it since. No one really steals a bad a painting. A crappy one, yeah. So that's really piqued my interest. So what if you can't get this one? So this is his first winning portrait. The next winning portrait's from 1961. A portrait of um, Rabbi Perush. He fled Nazi Germany in 1933 and went to London and then came out to Australia. He has a, an interesting history. I think you'd find him really fascinating. He started rabbi duties at the, the Great Synagogue in Sydney. Oh. And it's a fabulous place if you've never been. You well, must go. I will. So with that in mind, of course, I'm still looking for Molly. You know, fabulous portrait that we've got a great black and white image of. We know it to be like almost two metres square. But of course, a lot of artists destroy their war works, but also the sitters, if they've received the work and they don't really like it. Or they, they don't want to live with it. It. Yeah, that's so right. So you're thinking this portrait might not have made it? It's possible. I'll be really, really fascinated to know whether or not it's still there. Yeah, it's um, it's a, it's an intriguing one. Mm. Well, Rachel, Meldrum. how are you? National are you? treasure. Come in. This is Ziggy. Ziggy, this is Rachel. Hi, Ziggy. Come on. I haven't been here since the 90s. <gasps> Here's the portrait. It's fantastic. Molly, you look so young and hot. Oh, my God. It captures the rock and roll of the times. It's 80s-tastic. You were 
probably one of the most famous Australians when this was painted. An album that you really must do yourself a favour and have a listen to in your record shops. For 13 years, record producer Molly Meldrum hosted the most popular music show in Australian television history. We want to thank Molly, we want to thank all you great Aussie people. From its premiere in 1974, Countdown commanded a weekly following of up to 3 million viewers and put many Australian bands on the map. This is 1983. The painter Wes Walters, did he approach you? He came here to the house. I did some scenes for him. I will be the worst sitter in the world. So it's hard for you to keep still long enough to be painted, was it? Terrible. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. Don't forget that uh, the world premiere of this concert tour, which is going to be extraordinary, it's a new hat. Leave me alone no, for a it's going to, I'm trying to give you a promo. And um, at the same time, Elton was all that, and they bought the thing. Elton John bought this painting? Yeah. <laughs> and sent it down to me as a present. What the hell am I going to do with that? And obviously, he's surrounded you in the thing you love, which Absolutely. is all things Egyptian. Yeah, 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 I mean, he did an amazing job. An amazing man. Lovely, lovely man. This portrait has got a real sense of the relaxed, confident Aussie guy. It's painted in the 1980s. Yeah when I think people also couldn't necessarily live in the public eye, being, you know, open about who they love. Absolutely. It was hard. Yeah. It was very hard. This man is just on the cusp of achieving such extraordinary things. Well, that man... That man... Just control yourself, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this painting is an absolute cracker. No, I, I really love it. Mm. So I'm hoping that it'll make the top 100 portraits. Hi, Natalie, it's Rachel. Oh, hi, Rachel, how are you? I'm good. I've got a little surprise for you. Wow, tell me. Well, here I am at Molly's house. Natalie has been desperately trying to find this portrait and nobody has known where it is. And she's yet to see it in the colour. So can I show her your portrait? Actually, you can come around to my house sometime and have a look at it here. I'm going to do the big reveal for you. It's pretty extraordinary. Wow. Wow, where are you? Look at that. Wally, well, that's just how I remember you. <laughs> Isn't he gorgeous? And that was before. I turned into an outrageous old queen. <laughs> what do you think? It's always so great to see a work that you've only ever seen in black and white, and suddenly there it leaps out in Technicolor. So I have to ask you, if Natalie wanted to borrow this portrait, would she be able to...? No problem. That's great, Molly. Well, I'll see you soon. Thanks for the call. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> What a divine human and what a fantastic picture. I think Natalie would be crazy not to put it on her list. Look, Molly gave me a hat. As I plunge deeper into this fascinating time portal that is the Archibald Prize, my shortlist has continued to grow. I love this painting. I've met more artists. Wendy. Hi, Rachel. Chatted with more sitters. Who are you? No, I wasn't going to let anyone else have it, I can assure you. And even spent time with war heroes. Yes, they got the post-traumatic stress in the eyes. But I'm looking for just one portrait that will stand the test of time. A picture that really speaks to who we are as Australians, past and present. <clears throat> so to help cull my list, I've reconvened <laughs> my panel. Dr. Chris McAuliffe and my mate Steph Tisdall are back. And there's a special addition to my panel. My mother, Anna. Former art teacher and an artist herself who instilled in me my passion for art. So the first portrait, I'm obsessed with it, but I haven't seen it in the flesh and apparently it's huge. I love the style. I really do, I really like the style. 
If you saw it on the cover of a magazine, no, it would be a laugh. Man spread a monthly. <laughs> I think it's a really, really successful oh, portrait. So do, yeah, I do too. It's a curiosity, I'll call it. It's a little art historical curiosity. I've got to see it in the flesh, so I'll let you know how I go. All right, next, Matron Bullwinkle. I remember you really discovered Matron Bullwinkle when you were at school. It was a really mind-opening moment for you. It really did blow my little brain. Chris and I went to see this yeah, portrait in the flesh. It was physically small and yeah. a little musty. Her eyes, they, she looks angry, she looks cranky. I think her story is just really incredible. The, the painting has to stand up without you knowing that story. Mm. I have to agree. And it belongs in the War Memorial and it's fantastic that it's there. Well, given that we're talking about war heroes, mm. this is another one of my favourite portraits by William Dargie, who of course won with the Albert Namajira. I didn't expect to find this so compelling, but this is, this is right up there for me. He doesn't look so much as a brave hero, as a man who's wrestling with the horrible difficulties of being in a war. I'm really into this doggy guy. <laughs> Seriously. Like... It's a cracker, isn't it? It really is. Keeper? Well, it's unanimous. It's, I think it might be, actually. Yeah. All right, next, this Wendy Sharp with full vagina. She was a groundbreaker, a strong voice, not afraid to make claims for her art and for women's mm. status in general. And so... the painting's about that too, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think she really is actually talking to the trustees and going, <laughs> hey, guys. I dare you. We have been painting for a long time as women. Well, you know, back in the 70s, art historians asked the question, why have there been no great women artists? Mm. And it was about institutional barriers. It wasn't about mm. their lack of capacity. And I think this is a message to the gatekeepers. And I can just see the Archie judges having a bit of a battle about this one. It would have been quite controversial, but a brave choice at the time. I'm completely torn. I'm going to have to sleep on it. So another female subject and another woman artist. This is Fiona Lowry's winning portrait of Penelope Seidler. I think this is a portrait of an extremely strong woman who was very confident that comes out beautifully in this portrait. There's a real sense of self-possession, kind of a feeling of the visionary, seeing into another realm. When I first looked at this, I was like, oh, it's really washed out. The more I look at it, I, I cannot take my eyes off it. Yes, it's very compelling, isn't it? Yeah. I like her eyes, they tell a story. I'm going to keep it. You might have to end up keeping them all. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. So I found another female artist, and I do really, really love this picture. I, it's busy, but it doesn't really connect with me in any way, shape or form. She's saying there's, there's an aspect of self-presentation now, which is mm. me as a logo, me as a brand, or me as a type. She's totally manga princess, isn't yeah. she? But I, I think there's a lot of charisma in this. So, Kate, you move into the next round. Thanks to the panel, my list has narrowed again. From my treasure hunt so far, these are the portraits that are still in the running to become my all-time Archie. But there are still many more I have to see. Next time on Finding the Archibald, when portraiture meets prejudice. The hot question on Twitter, are you Muslim or are you Australian? And it was asking you to decide. We honour our immigration nation. It's winning this prize in 61 was a big signal that we're going to include a, a wider group. My own fear, my own disbelief. The portrait captured that moment. I meet a 100-year-old Archibald winner. Do you think most Australians still think artists are wankers? I sometimes think they are. <laughs> And a former Prime Minister. It's very confronting. The <laughs> size is smart. <laughs> Natasha unveils our miniature Archibald contender. Ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. And Natalie opens her centenary exhibition. It's fantastic. I reveal which portrait I think best represents our evolving Australian identity. And will Natasha's portrait of me make the cut? That's maybe. Could it even win the 2021 Archibald? The winner of the Archibald Prize goes to 